Hi, I'm Tracy, VE3TWM. Thank you for tuning in to Outdoors on the Air. In recent years, I have used 28-foot, 31-foot, and even 40-foot telescopic poles to raise my antennas. But over the past several years, I've seen some even taller poles come available onto the marketplace. When I recently saw that my friends at the high-end company in Holland were offering a 15-meter pole, that's approximately 50 feet, I became very interested. I ordered one from Ron at High End, and I'll be using it in this video. One of the ideas kicking around in the back of my mind when getting the pole was to use it to erect a 50-foot vertical antenna. Before we get started on this experiment, I'd like to share with you some thoughts in regard to vertical antennas. A primary attribute of vertical antennas is the omnidirectional radiation pattern they produce. Many of those who run directional antennas on the HF bands speak in derogatory tones of omnidirectional antennas, claiming they radiate equally poorly in all directions. There is no doubt that HF beams produce superior results in many instances. Yet many of us do not have either the wherewithal to put up a good beam on a tall tower, or forgiving neighbors and spouses who can overlook the long metal poles hovering over the neighborhood. Verticals have the advantage of being lower profile and thus less annoying to neighborhood snoops. Typically, beam antennas need to be up high to work well. On the other hand, vertical antennas have a low angle of radiation, so they can be effective when mounted with their base on the ground. It's important to note that due to the low angle of radiation, verticals are great for long distance communication, but not very good for making short range contacts. When talking about the HF bands, short range means anything within several hundred miles. Due to the omnidirectional pattern of the vertical antenna, you might not hear the faint signals that a Yagi would receive, but you don't have the issue of not hearing stations due to the beam being pointed in the wrong direction. On the downside, traditional multiband vertical antennas employ traps and coils to keep the antenna physically short while electrically lengthening the antenna and allowing for multiband operation. While the traps and coils allow the antenna system to present an acceptable impedance to the transmitter, they are a compromise that results in inferior performance compared to full-size antennas. Additionally, this type of vertical usually requires that a set of long ground radials be installed at the base of the antenna, which makes installation more labor-intensive. The need for ground radials does not allow for installations in small spaces that do not have the necessary space for the radials. When deploying a vertical antenna of the type I am going to show you in this video, the installation will take up much less real estate, making it practical for cramped areas. You may have seen my other video where I pair up a high-end fed, three-band end-fed antenna along with a spider beam, 40-foot telescopic pole. That particular combination works well together. The pole is just slightly longer than the antenna. As a long distance communicator it does very well. That particular antenna covers the 40 meter, 20 meter and 10 meter bands and you can imagine the coverage on 20 and 10 is very good. However the coverage on that antenna on 40 meters is compromised due to the fact that the antenna is undersized. It does use a loading coil to present resonance on the 40 meter band, but the bottom line is you could do better on a 40 meter antenna. Now, having said all of that, that takes me to today's project. The components of the antenna system are simple and there's only two of them. The high end fed four band is 20 meters long, that's 66 feet, and it's resonant without the need for a tuner on 40 meters, 20 meters, 15 meters, and much of the 10 meter band. The 50 foot pole sold by High End Company is the DX Wire 15 meter telescopic heavy duty mast. What I'm going to do is attach the far end of the antenna to the very tip of the mast, then run the radial straight down the pole theoretically giving me a no compromise vertical for the four bands. Since the antenna is about five meters longer than the pole, 
I will pull the remainder away from the mast to the operating position. A quick note on running the antenna wire straight down the pole. The fact that the pole is made of fiberglass means it will not detune an antenna the way a metal pole would. I've zoomed in on the top of the mast. You can see I have taped the far end of the end-fed antenna to the tip. In addition, as the wire comes down the pole in various sections, I have used electrical tape to fasten the wire to the pole and keep it from flying around. I am using five guy lines. I am also using good quality camping stakes to have them deep into the ground. I am hopeful that this setup will stand up fine uh, in some of the strong breezes that we've had. I've, I've had this up for about an hour now, and so far, so good. Well, there it is, a thing of beauty. For some reason, I always find myself wanting to salute a new antenna once it's been raised. Let's get the coax connected and see what's happening on the air. I'd like to add a word of caution at this point. I do not recommend the use of such a long pole anywhere near power lines. If the pole were to fall onto a power line, you could be electrocuted. Another safety point would be to avoid the use of fiberglass poles if there is any threat of thunderstorm activity. Fiberglass poles have a reputation of being lightning magnets. If a storm approaches, and only if you have enough time, get the pole down on the ground quickly. If you don't have enough time to pull down the pole, get well away from the antenna. CQ contest, CQ contest. Zulu Victor 5, Oscar contest. You are it. Victor Echo 3, Tango Whiskey Mike. Victor Echo 3, question mark, Whiskey Mike. Victor Echo 3, Tango Whiskey Mike. Victor Echo 3, Tango Whiskey Mike, 5911, QSL. QSL, copy 594. Thanks for the 5 and 9, 0, 4. Good luck. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you very much, Charlie. I'm going to Charlie. Victor Echo 3, Tango Whiskey Mike. Uh, Victor Echo 3, Tango Whiskey Mike, 5 I 8. Copy. Please copy. 5 9 oh, 4. Thanks, Charlie. I'm going to six, Charlie, my Charlie. Well, that was a good test. You know, I can't tell you exactly how an antenna of this type would compare to a more conventional vertical antenna with a good bed of ground radius. But I can tell you this, shorter antennas that are compromised by traps and coils may not operate as well even with a bed of good ground radios compared to a full-size antenna, which is what we're running here on 40 meters. So, I think this is a really interesting antenna that could provide some possibilities for folks who have a very small area in which to erect a DX capable antenna. Uh, and uh, I really like the idea that you don't have to spend a considerable amount of time laying ground radials down in order to have an effective station. Well, that's it. Thank you for watching the video. If you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. And just remember, feedback is always welcome. I try to respond to every single comment that is left to me. If you have a question, shoot it on over and I'll do the best I can with it. So 73 from Tracy, VE3TWM. Get out of the shack, get outside, and get on the air.